I've been on a pure carnivore diet for about two months and a pretty, a very, very low carb, greens only, modified carnivore diet for about a year. Jordan Peterson, a lifestyle guru, and his daughter feel that a meat only diet has improved their health. They aren't alone. It may not surprise those familiar with Jordan Peterson's world that he's a red blooded carnivore. That is not meant as an intellectual metaphor. Yes, the Canadian psychology professor has become a lifestyle guru for thousands of young men worldwide who have always considered intellectual pursuits a blood sport. Still, he has recently grown passionate about his diet. All he eats is meat, salt, and water. That's all, he concludes. Or more accurately, beef seasoned with the debate is so appealing. The emerging trend for a carnivore diet has freed him from lifelong despair for Peterson. Michaela Peterson, daughter of Jordan Peterson, realized how absurd that sounds, as she told recently after a flurry of publicity gathered around the 30-year-old, who is now providing nutritional advice to individuals suffering from problems similar to hers. Or perhaps it's not so much nutritional counseling as directing folks to consume exclusively beef. She doesn't do sponsored postings for health items, but she actively offers one-on-one -on -one counseling to folks who want to stop eating practically everything. Peterson appears to be reaching out to those in need. The blog, titled Don't Eat That, claims at the top that many health problems are curable solely by diet. This is correct. For example, polycystic ovarian syndrome, or PCOS, is a prevalent health disease that affects one out of every 10 women mostly women of reproductive age, diabetes, cardiovascular difficulties, depression, and an increase of endometrial cancer are all risks associated with PCOS. It is claimed that food, especially those that combat insulin resistance, can help lower the severity of PCOS. Similarly, one of the leading causes of bone and fragility fractures is osteoporosis, which makes the bones become porous. This illness causes 8.9 million fractures each year, according to the International Osteoporosis Foundation. Fortunately, eating well can enhance bone health and lower the chance of fracture. However, the Don't Eat That blog contradicts the disclaimer at the bottom of the website, which states that Michaela's remarks are not intended to be a replacement for professional health advice, diagnosis, or treatment. Michaela calls her diet the lion diet. The lion diet is an elemental diet that promotes stomach healing. The gut is frequently damaged by a typical American diet, drugs, or dysbiotic macrobiota, which may arise if you are delivered through C-section or are exposed to antibiotics as a baby. Michaela had a difficult upbringing because she was diagnosed with significant joint pain and other ailments at an early age. She was diagnosed with depression, OCD, as well as type 2 bipolar disorder by the year 2005. She was taking multiple drugs for each ailment, but she saw no progress and decided to modify her diet. Michaela's symptoms were depression and arthritis. She altered her diet to include only ruminant meat, cattle, any wild and domesticated bovines, goats, sheep, giraffes, deer, gazelles, and antelopes are all ruminating animals. She says it assisted her in overcoming the majority of her health concerns and improving her health. There are beliefs regarding the impact of certain foods on your mental health in practically every corner of the health and diet communities. How eating a lot of fat helps with depression, or how tomatoes may bring you out of a low episode. And Jordan Peterson's 30-year-old daughter aims to teach you how meat will heal your sadness and illnesses. According to a new BuzzFeed News investigation, between 50 and 100,000 people read Michaela Peterson's self-help site, Don't Eat That, each month. But after getting an extraordinary amount of requests from followers to discuss her own health journey, she began offering $90 hour-long Skype sessions about her carnivore diet. According to the regimen, which is a spin-off of the keto and paleo diets, all you need to do is consume beef three times a day, Literally only beef, nothing else, and it'll heal you of whatever bothers you. I'm here to offer an ear and go into greater detail about what helped me feel better, she adds on her website regarding the diet, which has yet to be approved by medical authorities. 
quit eating greens. And I thought, oh, really? Jesus, Michaela, I'm eating cucumbers, lettuce, broccoli, and chicken and beef. It's like, I have to cut out the goddamn greens? It's like, try it for a month. Okay. Within a week, I was 25% less anxious in the morning. Within two weeks, 75%. And I've been better every single day. I'm better now, probably, than I've ever been in my life. Michaela, in her perspective, is not diagnosing others. She is just sharing her personal experience, which she feels people have a right to know, particularly if they want to follow the carnivorous diet. And yes, it appears that moving from a balanced to a carnivorous diet is relatively easy. The body took some time to adjust to the new regimen. And given how resilient the human body is, it was able to adjust rather quickly. And so, look, try it for a week. It's nothing, right? And you might think, oh, God, what, what you'll find if it works is, A, you don't get nearly as upset about the things that used to upset you. So, and that'll be a shock. You'll think, oh my God, I would have flown off the handle because of that before, and now it's hardly bothering me. So that's a lovely thing. And, and then the second thing is, if something bothers you, you'll recover way faster. Dr. Emerin Mayer, a brain-gut research pioneer, explains how our gut affects our mental health. He says it's like a second brain. Carnivory definitely has believers. If you eliminate the root of your diseases, a drastic adjustment in diet will undoubtedly result in health advantages. Carbohydrates are seductive to modern people. The macronutrient, particularly in the form of sugar, takes advantage of our brain's reward system. There is a rush of feel-good hormones when you indulge in french fries or a piece of cake. What was once an uncommon enjoyment source has become a big component of our meals. You'll be healthier if you avoid it. So when you cut out larger food groups, what remains? Should we, as Peterson suggests, rely only on meat and salt? Jack Gilbert, faculty director of the University of Chicago's Macrobiome Center, says that your body would begin to have severe dysregulation of most metabolic processes within six months. You would have no short-chain fatty acids in your cells. Most of the byproducts of gastrointestinal polysaccharide fermentation would stop, so you wouldn't be able to control your hormone levels. You'd develop cardiac issues due to changes in cell receptors, and your macrobiota would be devastated. However, there is also scientific evidence supporting that incorporating meat into diets helps alleviate symptoms of obesity, diabetes, and cancer and aids in recovery from cardiovascular disease. Michaela's body went into remission after eating a few dashes of pepper on steak for three weeks, or her father's month-long remission with a touch of apple cider vinegar. What is most likely poisonous to the body is the notion that a specific meal is hazardous to the body. According to a 2018 study, simply believing you don't have a protective gene against obesity changes the physiological reaction of volunteers, prompting them to eat more. Like how sexual desire originates in our brains rather than our loins. Our relationship to food begins in our thoughts rather than our belly. All this time we thought we were curing the meat. Turns out it was the meat that was curing us. Do you think this eating regime is worth trying? It is certainly a unique look at how our biology works. If you enjoyed this video, please check out more like it on the Be Inspired channel. And don't forget to subscribe for more educational and motivational content. Thanks for watching.